Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of uh, Phenomenal Views. I am Nick Smith, of course, and I just want to say, first of all, Happy Easter. I hope you all had a great time with your families. Uh, if you went to church, I hope you had a good church service, or if you don't go to church and you went to church, I hope you had a good church service. I hope you all had a, f a wonderful Easter. This is my Easter present from me, of course, to you all, my fans, and uh, anyone on YouTube who's watching right now. Uh... This is going to be a hard review for me to make. Um, this is my review of Fast and Furious 7. And I just got to say, first of all, you will not be bored in this movie. This movie is such a fun ride. As soon as, as, soon as the movie starts, they, they show of what happened at the end of 6 where the, where the Asian guy died. I don't remember his name, but I should have, but... Um, you know, it's about at the end where he died, and we got this guy named Shaw who's like, I don't know you, or you don't know me, but I know you. And it was the brother, he's the older brother of the guy who died in the, or who the people took out, who Dom and his group took out in the first film, or in the sixth film. Um, and, uh, so the whole entire film is him coming after Dom, wanting revenge, and also with this, um, you know, this is of course after Brian and Dom and all them moved back to where the films originally started. Um, we are then shown uh, The Rock, but, but, but before then, they do such a good job with setting up on how bad this villain is, on how evil he is, how awesome and how much of a bad A he is. But it starts like, with him talking to his brother and then and then he says to the people in the hospital room, he's like, you're responsible for him. If he dies, I'll come back and kill you. After he's killed everybody else in this freaking hospital. I mean, he freaking killed everybody. And then he's walking out of the hospital. He takes a grenade and he pulls the pin and he gives it to a soldier. Like, hold on to this for me. Throws him. And then as he's walking out of the hospital, the grenade explodes and kills three innocent people. I was like... Wow, you're a bad, bad man. Bad man. And it, it set the tone of how serious and how, how much trouble Dom and his group are in. And then we cut to The Rock. Um, and just him, like... Like, apparently, he's not a good liar, apparently. So, they were talking in the film about how he misses catching all the big bad guys. How... Um, he brought in this one criminal and she was like, it wasn't big enough for you, was it? He's like, oh, come on, you know, we took him down. It's like, you're a terrible liar. And he's like, I'm enjoying this downtime. I'm getting to lift weights and stuff. And The Rock is already big as, it, as he is. Look, Rock, I understand you have to kit and you have to stay in shape, but stop lifting weights, man. Your arms are already out to here. You can barely put your arms down, man. I wish I looked like you. But, so like, he comes in and he sees Shaw's working on his computer, and then we got a awesome fight. Uh, all the choreography in this movie is top notch. It is fun. It is amazing. And we get a rock bottom in this movie. I was sitting in the front and like rock and and this guy was just going at it, and then all of a sudden, bam, rock bottom through a glass table. And then he did something with a grenade, and the rock ended up in a hospital. Where then, Dom is visited by, or Dom gets told what happens, and uh, they did this really funny bit between him and The Rock's, uh, the character that The Rock played's daughter. It's like, my dad said it kicked your, it kicked your A. Watch your mouth. But it was really funny, because Dom was like, uh, your dad's probably on a lot of, uh, he's on a lot of pain pills. You wish. And it was just really, really funny. Everyone in this film has such good chemistry. They, they really do. It's amazing. And this is also about between Dom and his girlfriend. I cannot remember her name. I apologize. But about how she lost her memory and where Dom is trying to get her to remember all these things. Like, by taking her to the race wars at the beginning of the movie. That was amazing. He took her to the race wars... 
and he was trying to get her to remember. And so she beats this guy, of course, but then, like, when everyone starts saying, you know, a ghost girl and everything, she starts to freak out. She spazzes out. And then him, her and Dom talk, and she's like, look, I don't remember. The girl that you knew, she's dead. I'm here, not her. I've got to find myself before she can decide anything. She leaves Dom, and then we're cut to, we're cut to beautiful suburbia, pretty much, uh, in L.A., um, with Brian and his wife, uh, Mia, and how she's telling Dom that they're pregnant again, but Brian misses the bullets, Brian doesn't like being, doesn't like settling down, and he just doesn't talk about it, but there is funny bits between him and the kid who was playing his son, and it was, it, there's a lot of heartfelt moments in this film, and how he's trying to get used to the minivan, and how he doesn't want to get used to the minivan, he wants to go back to that explosive life, um, there's just so many things good in this film, and then when the, when the start stuff st when the stuff starts to happen, um, when they go to the guy's funeral, they realize they're not hunt they're not being they're being hunted. Dom goes on a chase, and he is approached by this policeman who was wanting to help, who was wanting to take this guy down, who has never been taken down. How? He's pretty much like the Winter Soldier, pretty much. Except the Winter Soldier could probably kill this guy in, like, a second. Uh, but, so, like, with all this, like, we get some some awesome comedy bits between this guy. Like, uh, he's like, do you want a beer? He's like, I have, I, I'm more of a Corone man myself or something like that. And then he has, like, a bucket of Corone. And Dom's like, you're nice. You're, you're, you're awesome. So then we get like a bunch of these missions, like how they have to go and, and get this really ha smart hacker. And uh, during like this whole mission, they, okay, um, Rome is talking about like how apparently he's scared and he's talking about how I, I, I did this, no problem. I robbed a bank, no problem. I shot down a plane, no problem. And I was talking about how he's wanting to be a leader and he talks about how we need to hit here, the most guarded place. And they're like, but we can't do that. And he's like, yes. But that's the reason why we need to do it, is because they won't expect us coming straight for it. So they make a plan where they get in a car and get in a plane and drive backwards out of the plane. It was so awesome! And just all this awesome car chases, and then they find out that the hacker is a very hot woman, which Rome and the, uh, the other guy, I forget his name, kind of argue with. And they kind of do this thing that me and my friend Chip Mabe do back at Mac U. Uh, they start calling dibs. Like how, for example, uh, on the show Arrow, me and Chip were always like, dibs on Laurel. Dibs on, uh, dibs on Felicity. I traded Felicity for Laurel. It was a good day. Uh, <laughs> something like, about like how there's this um, thing called the God's Eye and how it can see you everywhere. Like in G.I. Joe, when they talk about like how you'll come across a camera and you'll get photographed and it's instantly in anybody's system. Yeah, this is with cameras all over the world. If like, if, they, if the government was looking for me, which they're not, uh, and uh, they use this thing called God's Eye. If I was living in Mexico or something and someone with a camera phone drove by and the camera got a good look at me, it would instantly, they would instantly be able to find me. That's how good this thing is. And so they're going to use this to find Shaw, which they do after they go to the Middle East and they go to this billion dollar party and they see this awesome car. And my first words were like, it's beautiful. And Brian's like, he's got this car co cooped up in, in a house. I want to punch this guy in the face. And then we get some more fighting choreography between Dom's girl and all these security guards. And then there's this really, like, there's this bad A chick. And she's just watching her tear, tear crap up. And then she's like, I'm glad you showed up. These parties are always boring me. And then we get, like, an awesome chick fight. And, like, so awesome. They knock each other over the balcony while, while Rome is making all these funny jokes, like, doing, like, this birthday thing and just trying to distract people. They drive the car through three buildings. It was awesome. Ah, I had such a good time at this movie. It was such a good movie. 
But then they then they find um with a bunch of high speed chases, of course, they eventually find um they find Shaw and uh he's sitting in a warehouse and because there was a certain person that they came across during the high speed chase, he's like, Did you ever hear the phrase the enemy of my enemy is my friend? I've got friends and Dom's like, I don't have friends. I got family. And so it's like this big, like this big war. And the guy who recruited Dom, um, he gets shot, of course. But um, uh, there, he's got his own uh, health system thing. And so like people are coming to get him. And it's like, Dom, listen, before you go, there's something I gotta tell you. you gotta try that German beer, man. I mean, I understand like I understand like Corona, but you gotta try it. And like in, in a serious moment, it broke the seriousness and made it funny again. But it wasn't like the lame joke funny it was the kind of like with me uh for example um we were playing kickball in high school once and my friend chris slade runs and punts me in the head my principal goes to ask me nothing's broken he's like nick are you all right and i said and i quote nothing's broken except my spine a few ribs maybe everything else and then there was another time when i was sick I, mean, I was bad sick, and my friend Dustin comes in and is like, Nick, you okay, buddy? I was like, yeah, besides the fact that I'm throwing up and having diarrhea at the same, I'm good. I want to have a fever about a hundred, about 103, but I'm good as gold, man. And it's like, glad you haven't lost your sense of humor. Yeah, it was kind of like that. Or if you want to say, if you want to compare it to the CM Punk, ins the CM Punk thing, that's a full-blown staph infection. <laughs> of course it is. I'm getting off track. But, so then they decide, you know, this is a war. We've got to finish this. We're going to go to war. And it's, and they devise this big plan on how to shut down God's eye because they got it. So what they decide to do is they decide to hack it by bouncing the hacker from one car to another, like hot potato pretty much. And during the whole film, I was really hoping and praying and with suspense, don't you dare kill Paul Walker in this movie. Because I heard that's what they were going to do. They don't. What they do is they have, from what I heard, they have his brother take his place, but they photograph his face onto him. And I'm just going to tell you, it was great work. You do not see his brother. I seen Brian O'Connor. I seen Paul Walker. I did not see his brother. His brother did a fine job, though, but I did not see him. I seen Paul Walker, and that is the point. That is the point. And so we get, they do this, um, not training montage, but this getting ready battle montage, like with uh, Dom taking off a double barrel shotgun, sawing it off, uh, Shaw getting ready for battle, and they meet on top of this parking garage, and he's like, Dom gets in that old Mustang from the first, uh, from the first film, and he's like, what? You thought this was going to be a street fight? After he takes his Mustang and gets it revved up and has it run on top of his car, he's like, what, well, you thought this was going to be a street fight? He throws away the double barrel shotgun, picks up two gigantic wrenches, and he's like, well, you thought right. And I thought they were going to do what they did in Godzilla, like whenever they would start to fight, cut away. No, they didn't. They showed them fighting with it, like, and it was awesome. It was really a really good fight. All the fighting choreography was great. There was a lot of things I did not see coming. This movie was not predictable at all. It was a fun ride. I strongly suggest you see it. Now, like, here's how I thought it was going to be predictable. There is a scene where Brian is talking to me about how he might not make it back. And she has not told Brian that she's pregnant. She's like, no. Look, we're going to have another baby. And, we're, and it's a little girl. And she is going to need her dad. So you have to promise that you're going to come back. Do not say goodbye. Say something else. And it, it was and because it was thundering and lightning. It was it was thundering. It wasn't light. It was, no, it was lightning. And I was like, oh, it's obvious Shaw's going to be there. And and he wasn't. I was I was thinking that that was going to happen, and it surprised me. And I, I thought it was really really well done. They do get into some very big situations to where The Rock... This is how awesome The Rock's character is in this movie. He's in an arm and a leg cast. It shows him moving his arm, breaking the cast, and just popping his arm back. And he goes and... He... 
he gets a mini gun from a drone that I could have sworn was the X-Men ship. And he smashes the camera and he's got the minigun and he's like, sweetie, I am the Calvary. And he's taking this minigun and he's shooting it. And at the beginning of the film, The Rock was basically saying to Dom, don't you miss. So after they take care of Shaw, because um, after they got rid of the virus, uh, after they blocked God's eye from them, they tried to kill Shaw. Um, Dom's like, about a street fight, the street always wins. He steps on the ground, and the pavement caves in on Dom. It doesn't kill him, but it knocks him unconscious. Dom then takes his Mustang and a thing full of grenades, and he throws it on the helicopter, and he crashes, and they thought he was dead. And then the grenades went off, and it was glorious. It was glorious. And then there was a time when I thought Dom was going to die, and the girl says, I... I remember everything as clear as day. Why didn't you tell me you were we were married? Dom wakes up and he he's like, it's about time. She's like, why didn't you tell me that we were married? He's like, because you don't tell someone they love you. And then it cuts to them at the beach with Brian and Mia and his son Jack on the beach, enjoying their time. And Dom got up and he left. And I started to cry. Um, this is going to be tough for me to talk about. Um, Dom is talking about how him and Connor, or how him and Brian are always going to be brothers. I'm sorry. Um, about him, how him and Brian were always going to be brothers, no matter what. And they ended the movie with them doing a dedication to him, and it was glorious. And I stood up and clapped. And I'm pretty sure that's my mom back there. Uh, yeah. Um, but I strongly suggest this is a must-see movie. I cried. You will cry. And there's nothing wrong with that. This is a must-see film of the... This isn't the summer... But I strongly suggest you go and watch this. When it comes out on DVD, I strongly suggest you pick this up. Guys, this has been another episode of Phenomenal Views. Put in the comments below, what did you think of Fast 7? If you've watched it yet, if you haven't watched it. I stood up and applaud after the movie ended. And no one could hate this movie. I don't understand how anyone could hate this movie. Guys, have a good night and a happy, happy Easter.